This is chapter 10, extra example two, stress distribution due to a rectangular loading. This example is similar to the previous one, extra example one, in the sense that the point of interest, point A, is not directly below the corner of the loading area. And therefore, we need to construct several rectangles and use the principle of superposition to find the stress increase due to the original rectangular footing. Unlike the extra example one, in this one, I'm going to show the use of bilinear interpolation equation to calculate the influence factor or I3. So let's get started. Uh, first, let's look at the problem statement. So we're given the dimension of this rectangular footing, which is four by eight feet. And the locational point A is also given. And the surface pressure, uh, we call this small q, is 10,000 PSF. And the depth of this point A we use small z, this is 16 feet. The solution we're going to use for the vertical stress increase is expressed as surface pressure Q times an influence factor I3, which is a function of the geometry of the footing. And the relationship between I3 and the geometry of the footing is given in this table 10.10. .10. And to use this table 10.10, .10, we need to make sure that that point A is directly below the corner of the rectangular area. And as I mentioned, so we're going to construct several rectangles and use the principle of superposition. So this stress increase due to the original loaded footing area. So let me label these rectangles here. Let's call this one, two, three, and then the rectangular footing four. So this stress increase due to rectangular footing four can be calculated as follows. So first we calculate the stress increase due to a large rectangle covering area one, two, three, four. Then we subtract this rectangle area one, two, and subtract rectangle area two, three. Since we subtracted rectangle two twice, we need to add it back to get stress increase due to the original rectangular area four. And since Q is uniform, then we basically just need to find the influence factor I3 corresponding to each of these rectangles we just constructed. And we're going to go over them one by one. First, for the large rectangle, a rectangle that covers this area one, two, three, four, the dimension of this large rectangle, we use B for the width. So this width is four plus eight, 12 feet. And the length is 10 plus eight, 18 feet. So these two parameters, M and N, they are calculated as, for M, it's B over Z, where Z is the depth of the point, 16 feet for this example. So M is 12 over 16, that's 0.75. And N is 18 over 16, which is 1.125. So once we have these two parameters, let's take a look at that table 10.10. .10. And if you look at 10.10, .10, you will notice that the M and the N value which is calculated are not listed in this table. So this M of 0.75 is between 0.7 and 0.8 and that N of 1.125 is between 1.0 and 1.2. So we need to use linear interpolation. And since for both an M and N, we need to do linear interpolation. So this is essentially a bilinear interpolation. So from this table 10.10, .10, first we can get the I3 value for the following combination of M and N. So for M of 0.7, N of 1.0, I3 value is 0.1491. For M of 0.3, uh, 0.7, N of 1.2, I3 is 0.1570. M of 0.8, N of 1.0, I3 is 0.1598 and M of 0.8 and of 1.2, I3 is 
right? So we have these basically four data points here. In the previous example, extra example one, I showed how to do this linear interpolation. So we do inter linear interpolation along m direction first, then we interpolate along the n direction. And for this example, I'm going to show the use of bilinear interpolation equation directly to calculate I3 that corresponds to M of 0.75, N of 1.125. So this slide shows that bilinear interpolation. And basically we have four data points. Uh, they are Q1, 2, Q1, 1, Q2, 2, and Q2, 1. So we know the value of F at these four points. And in our problem, that function F we're looking for is basically I3, the value of I3. And then we can think of this X axis as value of M. So we have M1, M2. And then the Y axis will be basically N. So we have N1 and N2. And as shown on the previous slide, we have basically the I3 value corresponding to these four points. And we want to find the value of the function F, that's I3, at this point P, X, Y. So that's our M and N combination for that large rectangle. And this is basically that bilinear interpolation equation we're going to use. So we're going to use this equation to directly calculate I3 at our M and N value. So let me go back to the previous slide. So this is basically the equation we're going to use. And as I mentioned, uh, in this example, the target function is I3. So we want to find the value of I3 for a given M and N. So M is basically the X axis and N is Y axis. So in the equation, and we have, this is basically x1, and this is x2, and this is y1, y2, y1, and y2. So we have these four data points, and then the corresponding value of i3 are basically function value f11, f12, f21, and f22. So these are the function values in this bilinear interpolation equation. So if you plug these values into this equation, then you can get the I3 value that corresponds to M of 0.75 and N of 1.125. And that value is 0.1596. So this is basically the influence factor I3 that corresponds to this large rectangle one, two, three, four. So now let's look at the next rectangle. So the next rectangle is this rectangle one, two. Again, point A is that corner of this rectangle one, two. And for this rectangle one, two, we know the dimension of this rectangle. Width is 10 feet, length is 12 feet. And depth of that point A is, again, 16 feet. So this M value, 10 over 16, is 0.625. And N value is 12 over 16, which is 0.75. And very similar to the previous large rectangle, if you look at this table 10.10, .10, you notice that again, these M and N values are not directly listed. So M of 0.625 is between 0.6 and 0.7, and N of 0.75 is between 0.7 and 0.8. So very similarly, again, we are given these four pairs of data. We have M of 0.6, N of 0.7, and that I3 from table 10.10 .10 is 0.1169. And then for the other three pairs, so again, we're given these four pairs of data and we want to find the value of I3 at M of 0.625, N of 
0.75. And we're going to use that bilinear interpolation equation again. And this time, after you plug in all these numbers, I3 that corresponds to rectangle 1, 2 is 0.1236. The next one is the rectangle 2, 3. And for this rectangle, the dimension parameters B, the width is 8 feet, length is 18 feet, depth Z, again 16 feet. So the M parameter 8 over 16.5, and for N, 18 over 16. 1.125. And this time, if you look at this table 10.10, .10, you notice that m of 0.5 is listed in the table, and n of 1.125 is in between 1.0 and 1.2. So this time, we don't need to do bilinear interpolation. Since m is given in this table, we just need to interpolate along the n direction. They say interpolate for n. Uh, so from table 10.10, we have for m of 0.5, n of 1.0, i3 is 0 0.1202, m of 0.5, n of 1.2, the i3 value is 0.1263. As I mentioned, uh, the, for this one, we only need to do linear interpolation along the n direction. So for linear interpolation, this I3 value is calculated as this is basically just very simple linear interpolation equation. This is point one, two, four, zero. So that's the value of I3 that corresponds to this rectangle two, three. Then the last rectangle is this rectangular area two that we need to add back because we subtracted it twice previously. So for this rectangle two, width B is eight feet, length is 10 feet, and depth z again 16 feet. So m value here, 8 over 16, 5. And n is 10 over 16 is 0.625. For this rec rectangle, just as a previous one, if you look at table 10.10, .10, you will notice that this m of 0.5 is in that table. And this n of 0.625 is between 0.6 and 0.7. So we only need to interpolate. We need, only need to do linear interpolation along the n direction. So from this table 10.10, .10, so for m of 0.5, n of 0.6, i3 is 0 0.0947. And for m of 0.5, n of 0.7, i3 is 0.0. 1034. And again, this is just a linear interpolation along z uh, along n direction. So this I3 linear interpolation. And the I3 value corresponding to rectangle 2 is 0 0.0968. So now we have calculated the I3 value for all these rectangles we constructed. And the final step is to basically put them together. So as I showed previously, the influence factor I3 corresponding to this original rectangular footing area four is calculated with this expression here. We just substitute the I3 values we just got for all the other rectangles. And that influence factor I3 is 0.00888.
once we have the I3 value, then the vertical stress increase delta sigma z of this rectangular footing four is surface pressure Q, which is 10,000 PSF times I3 of four. And you substitute Q of 10,000 PSF, so this is 88.8 .8 PSF. So that's the vertical stress increase due to that original rectangular area that footing four.